Welcome, good afternoon, or good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome, Guru Alicio Jun Barha, Balintawa, South Florida here. We have our guest today, Guru Michael Vincent Malanyaon of Cincinnati Balintawa Club. Say hello to our million and millions of, and millions of fans there. <laughs> hello, hello, again, Guru Michael Vincent Malanyaon of Cincinnati Balintawa Chapter. <laughs> Cincinnati Balintawa Chapter, that's right, that's right. Um, so what we're doing today is basically doing an instructor highlight. Uh, of the Tabata Blintowak uh, system here. So um, we're going to start off, we're going to jump right in and start off with an icebreaker question. <laughs> All right, let's see. He's, he's a little bit worried about what's let, going let, on Let's there. hear it, let's hear it. Let's All right. It. Guru Mike, you're about to get into a fight with a Marvel or DC superhero character. Ooh. Who are you going to be fighting? <laughs> who am I going to be fighting? Or who are you going to be who, fighting? Who am I going to be? <laughs> no, who are you going to be fighting? Oh, man. <laughs> I w- I'm going to fight Batman. Batman? Batman. Well, okay. Batman. Yes. <laughs> I guess. I want to fight, fight Batman. <laughs> at least get, have a little bit of a chance other than the Man of Steel. <laughs> right, exactly, right? <laughs> Unless you got, uh, got a little bit of a kryptonite there. Right, right. Oh, no, yeah, I kind of... So, okay. Where are you from and where do you live? So I'm currently residing in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, more likely close to the Fairfield Township in the suburbs of Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. Uh, I've been living there since uh, 1999, um, moved in the States uh, prior to that in the late 80s. Okay, and you were from? I'm originally from the Philippine Islands. Uh, my, uh, well, my l- stomping grounds, I grew up in Pasay, Libertad City. And uh, mm-hmm. my provinces are in Bicol and in Cavite. Bicol in the house. <laughs> Fellow Bicol. Oregon. <laughs> Oregon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Oregon. Oh, uh, now what is your uh, what is your Balintawak lineage? See, I got papers and stuff. I, I know. Like, so this is kind of tough for me. I, I don't have any uh, criminals. <laughs> yeah. like you do. My Balintawak lineage. I am um, a full qualified instructor under Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada. That is my Balintawak lineage. Uh, I learned Grand. Uh, I learned uh, the initial Balintawak. Um, from uh, Grandmaster George Penafiel, and he was also a FQI under Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada. So that's my lineage from Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada to Grandmaster George Penafiel, and I learned it in the Cincinnati area. Okay, all right. Now, this probably, I'm gonna have to stretch here because I know you've been in Balintawak for a little while. When and how did you start your Balintawak journey? Man. And, and, and there's a follow-up to that. When, how, and why Balintawak? Well, <laughs> when, why, and how? Yes. Well, let me start off with the how first. Okay. So, um, Grandmaster George Penafell and I actually work for the same company. Ah, and I right. happened to see him in the same technical center where I worked at. And the first question asked me, you Filipino? <laughs> <laughs> very, very typical of, of uh, another so, Filipino. So my response is, yes, <laughs> you should learn Balintawak or Arnis or yeah. Eskrima or Kali. And I'm like, all right, yeah. let's do it. Here's my address, here's my dojo. That's the how, how the, that got started. He just, he just like straight out asked yes. me. <laughs> the, the, this is the awesome. guy that never met before. He just said, hey, are you Filipino? It's like, yeah, and we start ch- ch- chatting about, you know, how I got in the, you know, uh, work and everything. And next, next thing I know, he was introducing me that, oh yeah, I'm an instructor and you should stop by my dojo. You should learn some Balintawak. Uh, you should wow. uh, learn Kali or Iskrim on our niece. And, uh, and say, are you familiar with Balintawak? I said, no, I'm not familiar. It's really, really the camaraderie, uh, meeting uh, mm-hmm. Grandmaster George Penafiel. And really, really, in, um, you know, uh, we really have a small diversified uh, uh, group uh, where, we, where I worked at. And meeting oh. him was just like one in a million. Yeah, it's by chance. <laughs> it's really by chance. He happened I mean, to be there, the same <laughs> building, same you know hey. culture, same ethnic background, same you know upbringing, and we start chit chatting, and we uh, uh, we had a common interest, which is martial arts, Filipino martial arts specific, and he happened to be a uh, lead instructor wow. of uh, Cincinnati Balintawak Club. Uh, when was he was leading then. it, yes, he was yeah, leading it. It was club, yes, yes. exactly. Yeah, because I remember it was CBC. Right, well, that's correct. Right. It's still CBC. It's still CBC. <laughs> it's still CBC. <laughs> <laughs> it, it never changed. The, the club has changed the chapter. Yeah. That's all it, it was yeah. designated to when I started leading it in Cincinnati. Uh, all right, yeah. all right. So, who and, is, yeah. so, how, so, so oh, that's uh, how, actually, that's, yeah, that's the how. A bit more. And uh, the, the next question is uh, when? Is that? When? So, I met Grandmaster George Penafiel in 1999. That's when I started our my mm-hmm. initial 
journey with Grandmaster George Penafiel right. when he started teaching uh, FMA towards me specifically for uh, Taboada Balintawak system. So that's the when. That's the when. And, and uh, why Balintawak? Why Balintawak? I think, you know. I mean, uh, why, 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 why do you, yeah, why Balintawak? I, I think uh, for me, uh, it is more of a culture. Uh, you know, I want to bring back the culture towards, uh, you know, learning a Fili Filipino martial arts uh, style. Uh, yep. And uh, he, again, by chance, one, one in a million when I <laughs> happened to work there in the same building, he happens to show up and ask me, are you Filipino? And hey, do you want to yeah, learn? Yeah. And I said, yes. And that was it. That was, that, was, that was the beginning on when and how and why. And why. And really just uh, happened to be in the right place at the right time. And it will probably never happen, you know, in... in uh, in, in my journey in, uh, in, 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 in that timing. Uh, wow. But it might happen in a different context, but just that timing was really it was just me. It was just at the right time. Yep, yep. this yeah. just happened to me. All yep. right, so, uh, you know, as, an, as a Tabata Balintawak FQI, uh, who is your completion of the art and where are they now? My completion, the completion of the art student? Yes. So, so <laughs> point of clarification, I have actually two. You have two. I have two. No, you only need one, guys. You only need one, but he had two. And, and there's a bunch of guys that were able to come in with more just because, you know, they that's their journey. My, my COA uh, was actually um, Master Sam Dunn. Oh. So Sam. he was actually in the Cincinnati Balintawak Club yep, where he and I are training together. And we happen to get uh, paired off with the COA. That's the first one. Then the second portion uh, of my journey in attaining my COA is with Guru Paulus Santos. So he was my uh, he was my student from uh, level one to up to level six and up to FQI. Uh, nice. Master Sam Dunn just happened to be part of the practitioner with uh, Grandmaster George Penafiel, yep. and really, really. He wanted to um, uh, promote the, uh, the Balintuak Tabuada system, and we paired up, uh, so he became my C of A for my FQI. Okay, okay. Now, how was that FQI journey experience, and were there any major challenges or hurdles that you had to overcome? So, um, I can't see my notes. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know, I want to see, well, wait, let me see my current notes there. I got, I got like a bunch of notes here, all right. Hurls and uh, how to overcome it. Well, yeah. let me po uh, put it this way. Um, Grandmaster George Penafiel had put a lot of um, uh, caliber in his teachings, uh, especially for uh, mm -hmm. Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada Balintuwak system. Uh, best in class, uh, uh, types of material shared and taught to every one of his students. Uh, we are uh, expected and to be expected more, uh, not only to become uh, in uh, students, instructors, but really ambassadors of, uh, of Filipino martial arts. So those are really a big hurdle to overcome when your uh, instructor is basically yep. navigating you to, hey, you're gonna be my student, but at the same time, you're doing a parallel path to become an instructor. And not only that, you have to be a good ambassador for Filipino martial mm -hmm. arts. So that is uh, uh, within my journey with Filipino martial arts under Grandmaster George Penafiel. And with that, it tied in with Grandmaster George uh, with Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada, uh, with the leadership he had, how he expect his FQIs to be, right. and uh, and um, with Grandmaster George Penafiel and uh, Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada, um, their camaraderie, camaraderie together, right. and basically how they structured what uh, the expectation would be for all Cincinnati Balintawak Club uh, practitioners right. and instructors, how they moderate themselves. Is uh, is we are we are observed. We are very very. <laughs> yes, observed, we are. Um, yes, we are. And the point of a, 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 a different level of uh, caliber in terms of trying to be the best as we can to support not only Grandmaster George Penafiel but also Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada. Uh, yeah. No, actually, and and being a Cincinnati Balintawak Club uh, practitioner myself uh, with my lineage, I mean, I know that uh, it was you hear it from both jo uh, Grandmaster George and Grandmaster Bobby. And it was like, you're getting some very, very immediate feedback, let's just say. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and expectations are very high. Exactly. Um, now, what were uh, your ex inspirations when coming up with your 24 techniques? Inspirations uh, for the, uh, my 24 FQI techniques. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, l a, little bit of a, a little bit of a mix uh, coming into play in that one. Um, first off, my techniques um, from Philippine martial arts are 
um, based on maybe three different types of components. One would be uh, coaching, a lot of coaching from Grandmaster George Penafiel, yep. where uh, initially my um, initial martial arts uh, training is uh, Japanese karate do. So there's a lot of kicking and punching. Uh, and there's a second, and the secondary portion of it is that I initiated modern knees at a very young age. So with those two components plus Grandmaster George Panafel's uh, coaching and feedback, my 24 techniques kind of stem from that structure where okay. I'm most comfortable with, where I showed him my forms and techniques and how to apply it. Not Nothing fancy in some of them, but at the same time more direct and more uh, yeah. more um, direct adaptable direct. and direct. Yeah. Yep. So I know what it was a challenge for me going through my, my uh, FQI um, 24 techniques. Was there a particular strategy you used in navigating through the process of remembering your own 24 techniques in order? <laughs> in order? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. absolutely. I mean, yeah. that was one of the challenges really for me. I was like, how do I make sure I remember what, you know, the sequence? I mean, you could put in the reps, but uh, right. yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think, how did I divide? I think I devised my, my 24 techniques in uh, Grandmaster George uh, Penifal's um, uh, Tang Sudo background with regards to the kicking and punching because that ties into what I really like to do with the punching and kicking with okay. the Japanese Karate Do. Yep. And with the modern arnis, it's just in, uh, entry points for, uh, for the, with a stick and maybe the stick grappling. So that kind of uh, initiated the mindset of what I could follow through it. Right. But base foundation, uh, I really want to keep um, keep it structured. How uh, Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada had put it uh, when he taught us the twelve basic strikes, the twelve basic strikes, full power, the shadow fighting, all comes back to the basic. How right. am I going to remember it? Is basically categorizing it. Okay. I'm going to say I'm going to start <laughs> thinking about how am I going to utilize a stick with a counter with a punch, and maybe that would be, that would be one set, and another portion would be uh, maybe a stick grappling uh, technique, and right. another group would be another would be with a kick, and and the other one might would maybe with a takedown. So I just kind of structured it in the way that you know um, ha that has been presented to me by Grandmaster Bobby Tabuara on how he presented his curriculum, and that gave me a foundational mindset on my own structure so and how to remember my own techniques. Yeah, because 24 techniques is a lot to remember. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, you could you know your techniques, but it's like to know in sequence. All right, so now let's talk about your FQI gauntlet. Oh, yeah. Uh, how was that experience leading up to the to finally going one-on-one -on -one with GM Bobby? And yeah, and how many did you, you know, basically how many did you run through and any notable moments within that uh, that gauntlet? Oh, so, <laughs> I mean, that's always a, a, a pinnacle experience. <clears throat> the gauntlet was definitely, you know, have been, uh, have been growing more over the years. I, I think for me, it has uh, started, of course, with uh, a few a few FQIs. Yeah. But a memorable, memorable moment in my gauntlet w w uh, was that um, Grandmaster George Penifield told me, here's a blindfold, put this on. And I'm gonna do counter to counter with you. That was on your gauntlet. That was my gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, don't. That don't, was my gauntlet. Don't drop your stick and don't. Uh, yes. Don't hit your partner. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that was a big surprise to me. That was in my FQI, and that was your. I, that was my FQI level <laughs> testing with Grandmaster George Penafiel, and then lead. Of course, leading up to that, I, there's all you know. Grandmaster Penafiel is really, really crafty, but you think you know everything, but yeah. there's always that. Five to ten percent that you will never know until it comes to the level testing, and he's really, really crafty with that. And that was the crafted craftiness and how he presented when I got to my uh, level uh, FQI level testing. And of course, after that's done, here's Grandmaster uh, Bobby Tabuada. It's like, oh my, like, well, what am I gonna do? What are you gonna do now? <laughs> and here's Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada. Here's a real sh sword, and I have a thing like, oh my gosh, this is just mad crazy. Yes, yeah, so the, it just kind of escalated to that point. You, you think uh, being in the gauntlet with other FQIs was, uh, you know, um, control mindset, counter to counter, don't yeah. hit your, you know, FQIs yeah, yeah. and your partners. Yep, yep. The first time I got put on a blindfold to do my level in my, um, as part of my gauntlet with uh, Grandmaster George Penfield, that it blew, I, I mean, I was ready to throw. <laughs> then that blindfold came away. Here's Grandmaster Bobby Tabuati. All right, you ready? Here's the sword. Like, oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, now what? <laughs> so memorable and, moments, memorable yeah, moments. Yeah, that yeah. sword when it comes out, you're like, oh, yes, oh, oh, what are we doing now? <laughs> right, 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 right. right. Uh, we'll transition a bit. Do you remember when you first met Grandmaster Bobby, and how did that go? So th the first time I met Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada was when Grandmaster George Penafiel hosted him in 
Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh. And Master Feather release uh, uh, dojo, the Taekwondo uh, dojo in, uh, in Mount Healthy. And oh. that's the same place where I met you. Yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, that was the first time I met him over there for a short workshop. Uh, instantly, uh, the energy was there. Um, no doubt about it, if you guys met uh, Grandmaster George, uh, Grandmaster George Penafil, he has this craftiness, but now meeting Grandmaster Bobby Taboada, yep. it just brought it up to the, like tenfolds of like, wow, you, you know, it, it's just um, uh, really, um, mesmerizing to see how um, how efficient the movements are yeah and that small workshop was it I mean I'm, uh, I was yeah. like oh wow I, I want to be <clears throat> I want to learn what Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada can offer to us yeah uh, and that was my journey in, in you know in, in sticking with the you know Tabuada yeah. balloon to walk system yeah. and attaining the FQI level okay now still with Grandmaster Bobby was there any interesting or unique observations or experiences you remember that you could share about Grandmaster Bobby, you know, throughout your time within Balloon to Walk. Anything that pops in, pops into my, you're like, well, nope, can't talk about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, uh, you know, because we all have our different moments and experiences. We, we, we do, we do. So is that, so, uh, you know, so, this is now, uh, yeah, the, the, the one memorable, well, there's a couple of memorable moments, but I think there's one moment where, when um, uh, Grandmaster Bobby Tapuada pulled me the side uh, during a camp when there were uh, when we were doing the FQI or COA uh, presentation, right? And Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada starts doing that empty hand drill with me with the with the knuckles, you know, yeah. like the you know the knuckle <laughs> destruction. Never seen that before, right? So he 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 did that to me a couple I've of times. I've seen that before, but I, I know and, 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 and I caught this in video. Uh, somebody took a video of uh, of us uh, and. Uh, uh, I believe it's uh, Guru Brian Corrier, and he gave me a copy of this. So he and I were doing this, and he is so quick with that empty hand knuckle destruction. Where I tried to knuckle and you know, try, you know, hit his hand with my knuckle, I literally hit my own hand. <laughs> and, he, and he gave me this look. <laughs> so I and it became like you know, it became like a jokingly you know play at, at, there, at that point. Then all of a sudden, I got him really good. And he's like, "Ooh, you got me good." Then uh, this is this is the point where, like, oh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I always told, tell my uh, my friends this, like, uh, I never seen Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada, you know, get mad mad. But you know, <laughs> it, it's like a point of reference to me. Maybe I kind of slightly hit him by accident, but not really intentionally, but sort of intentionally. Um, you know when uh, a shark is about to take a bite at you, the, the <laughs> island's gonna go back. <laughs> the, I, I can see him like I'm gonna, gonna knock back. you out right now, <laughs> and I'm like uh, I'm gonna step out. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I st step back a little bit because I see the man, <laughs> Grandmaster Grand Bobby, about, about to knock me out in front of yeah. two hundred, about the like you know, hundred people. You, the switch. Switch. you see the switch for like just that split second. I'm not sure if it's for real or not, but that was my observation. Uh, that was one of the best memorable moments I have with him. I'm like. Wow, that was good. that was cool. That was yeah. uh, that was uh, not intentional, yeah, but, but memorable <laughs> to me. But your, made, your life flashed before your eyes. <laughs> may, may be in my own perspective that I saw that, and it may be in his perspective, he was yeah. just uh, you know, it's nothing or uh, just yeah. joking around. But observing, observing Grandmaster Bobby to while I look at me, he's like, okay, I'm I'm gonna knock you out right now. <laughs> that that kind of like a Get ready well, to say. that ready face coming. Out. All right, uh, I'm gonna step back and just hey, how are you, how are you doing? <laughs> When, <laughs> when's the uh, when's the last time you uh, talked to GM? Uh, Grandmaster Bobby Tawad. I just saw him uh, actually. I uh, saw him in in in, uh, in my seminar a couple yeah. of months ago, but actually just talked to him very recently yeah. as he and I were uh, trying to discuss on uh, on um, setting up and supporting uh, Grandmaster Nick Elizar for his upcoming Zoom online workshop actually, yeah actually so there's some that, yeah. planning stages ha happening in that end and of course uh grandmaster bobby tobias is in, in complete support of that event and venture and yeah. uh i think i just talked to him less than two weeks when, ago when is that event so is uh that coming up yeah it's coming up it's this next week? it's not this weekend but the following weekend which uh, is okay. july 10th uh 7 to 9 p.m north america time eastern standard time and 7 a.m to 7 i'm sorry 7 p.m to 7 or 7 p.m to 9 p.m Saturday, North America, Eastern Standard Time, and that's in July 10th. 
Okay. And Philippine time is July 11th, Sunday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah. Philippine time. Okay. Yeah, I remember. So, yeah, Jim. Uh, actually, I was talking to Jim Bobby. I think yesterday he, he did tell me that something about uh, you right. having a uh, GM Nick. Yeah. Oh, uh, are there any favorite GM Bobby Tabuada quotes that comes to mind? I know he says a lot of things, so it's like what you know, just something that comes to mind. If you have any, the, the, the very first <laughs> one has always been the standard one. Uh, you know, the, you know, this is the feeler. This is the killer. <laughs> that's always been a standard. That's, that's, that's always been a standard. The killer and that, killer. That, that's the you know, this is the feeler. And this is the killer. That's always been the standard. That's you know? always been the standard, that, and that, I still that, say that actually. Right, he does that. You know, he does that all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, it's you know, in, but it's right. he I mean, he, he quote that. Yeah, and then. there's this comment that I uh, somebody actually or he told one of the photographers in Cincinnati when he was uh, when I hosted them in Cincinnati, and something about you know wait for him to bait you, and you will see the opening was another one. Yeah, yeah. So that was another another uh, good, good, good 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 quote from him. Uh, yeah. So. Well. How has being in Balintawak impacted? Or influenced you? So, uh, Balin to Walk, Tabuada system? Tabuada system, yeah. Uh, so, impacted and influenced me. So, I think one of the biggest things that, uh, you know, that has really impacted me is that how Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada had presented his FQIs. So, whenever he does a camp, he lets his FQI do their own presentation to his group, or to the people that attended. May it be 50, may it be 200. It doesn't matter he will let his FQI lead a session, a small session for the entire um, event. And mm -hmm. that is a big impact because yeah. it really brings you up to that level as a, not only as a practitioner, not only as an instructor, but as an ambassador. Because yeah. you're now carrying the Tabuada Balling to Walk system, you're em emphasizing what the teachings that he presented to you, you're demonstrating it, and how are you as an ambassador promoting it. That's, yep. So that's the one, one of the <laughs> biggest impact, right? Yeah, yeah. So this allows you to uh, to a point of uh, being uh, creative also, uh, not only yeah. to the Balin to Walk system, but uh, the flexibility to add on to what your previous uh, martial arts style would be to complement the Tabuada Balin to Walk system, yeah, yeah. right? So there's this options where you could go from uh, from the sticks to the empty hand to the blade, those are all you know uh, applicable. Yeah, right. You right. Know, it's all applicable to demonstrate that people have always demonstrated. Well, in shadow fighting, one so and so, and then you could apply a draw with a blade, or you could do an empty hand technique for a takedown or joint right, lock yep. technique. That's always been the case. Yeah. You know? Yep. That's uh, yeah. That's uh, that's a good, no. That's being able to put those inserts. Mm -hmm. um, now, how being an FQI and, and, and teaching, how has Balintawak impact impacted or influenced your students? M how did they? Yeah, uh, from your perspective. I from mean, my in my perspective, I think the context of um, bringing in the cultural aspect of saying I'm going to teach you Filipino martial arts, and the style I'm going to be teaching you will be Tabuada Balintawak system, where we start up with the sticks, single sticks, is enough of a foundational. Um, startup for mm -hmm. any practitioners. Um, it has influenced them like, oh yeah, I could. they could go from the most basic to the most advanced. Uh, and actually, the structure itself allows you to gauge how proficient your students are. Mm -hmm. You give them a stick, oh, they start twir you know, twirling and they start moving, oh, there you go. You, all right, I got you. Mm -hmm. You have some previous martial arts experience. Or they're just like, I don't know what to do. You know, it's like, <laughs> then you start off from the you know, foundation. So just by that simple structure, like, well, this is the 12 basic strikes. Right, right. When you yeah. start doing 12 basic strikes and you're trying to say, this is one, this is two, up to 12, you're starting to adjust and actually observe them and mm -hmm. how they're doing their footwork. If you, you would easily find out and gauge your students, like, okay, you have previous martial arts experience, you're starting to chamber, you're starting to move, you're starting to, you know, uh, um, uh, angle out or angle yeah. in, that's always a, the, the gauge for me as an yeah. instructor. So that's yeah. impacting me as an instructor to gauge what my students are in the very beginning when they start a, a journey within Philippine well, martial arts under uh, Tabuada Balintuang <laughs> system, right? Yeah. So how, how, how did, did that impact them? So again, once you gauge them, you know, well, I could show you this, I could share you this, and this is how you could apply it, and it becomes yep. more of a catered one-on-one -on -one teaching with mm -hmm. your students, 
where you could say, well, you're just a beginner. I could understand this. Let me show you the basic 12 basic strikes. Or you have some previous martial arts experience and you could cater it into the sense like, well, this is, my, this is how you might use it, but in Blade to Walk, this is this how, how we would do it. That's how, you know? yep. So you kind of give them the guidance and the foundation. So just by that, you right. already know where they stand and how you could start oh. them, right? Oh, just out of the first few swings, you could always <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like, like, yep. Okay, we know we know where where uh, your experience level is. Uh, if you were given thirty seconds to quickly share the benefits of training in Balintawak, uh, what would you say? Training in Balintawak, man. Mm, thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Now <laughs> and now. <laughs> so training Balintawak systems uh, um, foundation. It's always about cater about foundation. Uh, starting with a single stick uh, encompasses the uh, ex extension of your weaponry, not only to your hand but also to a, a weapon. That could be taken off and it could be an empty hand drill. Uh, right. Same techniques, nothing has changed. It's just a context of using a, a weapon or without a weapon. Right. Applying a different type of weapon. It could be a short, it could be a knife, it could be anything using yep. the same techniques. Yep. I mean, application, right? Ambidextrous training, you could learn from right hand to left hand. Yep. So it uh, brings you that um, ambidextrous uh, systems to uh, what you could utilize it for. Again, back to foundation. Back. And you could make it as fast and powerful as you can and it's up to you how to present it. And time. <laughs> All right, now what do you think the hardest part uh, is about learning the art? <laughs> learning the art? Learning, <laughs> learning Balintawak, yeah. What do, you think the, what do you think will be the hardest part about learning Balintawak? I mean, that my journey has started a while back, right? Uh, I've, and every time I see Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada, I s s always see something new. <laughs> it's never, uh, it's, uh, may maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a slow learner. Maybe <laughs> I, I'm just a little bit more observant. But from the very beginning of learning the Tabuada Balintawak system, that's all foundational. It's great, but there's this nuances that you'll never um, understand until you see it very repetitively and very and explained uh, uh, in detail by Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada. Chambering, you know, those are, you know, the no. first First, you see the, you know, the foundational. Okay, you have the stick, you have the chamber from, you know, uh, semi-advanced stance to basic stance or basic stance to semi-advanced stance, um, left chamber, right chamber, yes. Yep. Then the footwork, you know. <laughs> and then the footwork. And the, and the footwork. Then this, like, this gets all So, so uh, there's, I mean, there, there, there's, uh, there's a lot there. I mean, people yep. don't understand. And, and uh, Grandmaster <laughs> Bobby Tabuada has crafted the system to, uh, to an extent that people can are able to learn it. Mm -hmm. But there's always something new. There's always that small nuances to improve yeah. yourself. And right. uh, up to me right now, uh, I mean, whenever I see Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada, it's always like, let me see how he does his footwork. Because he's... <laughs> The man is fast. The, ma the man is fast. The That's the period. GMBT <laughs> is fast. I don't care what you say. <laughs> no. I, I'm not uh, contradicting her or challenging that fact. Uh, yeah, there, there's, uh, there, there's this movement and his energy, uh, the deficiency on how he utilizes energy from that high impact, high power from right. ground up. It, yep. It's it's it, unmatchable, uh, right? Yes. The yeah. you know people would you know say, hey, what's that one whack? That one whack is gonna <laughs> knock you out, and the, <laughs> only no, one no. man can deliver that right now, and that's Jim Bobby Tabuada, that right? Is, and, is and, am I am I trying to emulate that? Hell yeah, I'm trying to emulate that. Uh, yeah, I think we all are. <laughs> but <laughs> the question is that can we deliver what he could that he could deliver right now? Yeah. I I'm just there to observe. I'm there to learn, and I wish I can. You yeah. you always try to get to that level of pinnacle where Grandmaster Bobby Tawada yeah. is, yeah. and as a FQI, I you know I always uh, admired him for his uh, for his you know for his, the way he teaches the art, the yeah. way he presents it, and the yeah. delivering of power and speed has yes. always been critical. Yeah, right. And that yeah no that's uh, I mean we all strive to be able to generate that much power you know right. At the same amount uh, with minimal effort. Minimal. Uh, minimal. minimal. Just minimal. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, for those taking this the step to try bullet to walk, any words of encouragement or insights? Encouragements and insight. I think everybody is a practitioner. Yeah. As a practitioner, you have to always empty your cup, and he, if you are willing to learn the water bullet to walk system. Just go with an open mind, empty cup. 
Not you know. to throw away what you have in the past. Always keep that. And that's always what Grandmaster Bobby Tabot have encouraged us to do. Um, what it is is really just to learn and right. really uh, get ahead in terms of how Grandmaster Bobby Tawada presents his system. Just okay. empty your cup and learn from there. Go from there. And uh, Grandmaster that, Bobby Tawada will always coach you, will go give you guidance and give you perspective and how you could be efficient in terms of your, you know, your energy usage. Yep. And sometimes it could be frustrating because some, some people <clears throat> are higher ranking practitioners out there. Yep. And uh, emptying a cup is not that easy. Yeah. Oh, especially uh, yeah, especially if you're very very if, if yeah, you, if, but uh, you know, if you have a highly yeah. skilled, you know, practitioner in other martial arts style, in other Filipino martial arts style, emptying your cup is tough. Yeah, it's starting not, from, you know, from a new starting from a new system. Yeah. But uh, that's my word of encouragement. Uh, if you want to learn uh, Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada's Balinto Walk system, you just have to empty your cup. You yep. just have to get out of uh, <laughs> context that like it's like any other martial arts style out there. If you are willing to be open-minded, just enter with an open mind, empty your cup, yeah. and, and learn. There you go. Uh, this is kind of like the first first one out. So this is uh, um, I'm calling this the 60 seconds. I, I don't know if it's 60 seconds. It might be 90 seconds. 90 seconds of full power, no control questions. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> so, I'm going to give you a random questions. Uh oh. It could be like multiple choice, like, oh, it's going to be this or that. Okay. You know, is it this or that? Or it could be like, uh, uh, finish a sentence. Okay. Or it could be, um, you know, just give me an answer. So, right. it's, uh, it's, it's speed. Uh -huh. You know, that's why it's 60 seconds of full power, no control questions. Let me, let me uh, see if I could do the um, uh, right amount of time here. All right. Well, I guess. I guess we'll see. Hopefully, I got enough for 60 seconds. If not, we'll go 90. We'll figure it out. All right. Ready. Ready for full power, no control questions. Pool or beach? Beach. Pool hall or swimming pool? Swimming pool. White sand beach or black sand beach? White sand beach. Snorkeling or diving? Diving. Uh, my own volcano or Banawe rice terrace? Yeah, my own volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Green coconut or brown coconut? Brown coconut. Uh, movies. Uh, best of the best or Rambo? Best of the best. Gladiator or Braveheart? Uh, Braveheart. <laughs> That's a tough one. The Terminator or Predator? Predator. White rice or garlic rice? Wow, garlic rice. <laughs> Lumpia or adobo? Lumpia. Uh, mornings or nights? Nights. Summer or winter? Winter. Give me two colors. Red and blue. <laughs> Cats or dogs? <laughs> dogs. Fruit or vegetables? Fruit. Sweet or spicy? Spicy. Carabao or Philippine Eagle? Philippine Eagle. Cardio or weightlifting? Cardio. Give me a number. Three. <laughs> Block or evade? I'm sorry? Block or evade? Block. Run 100 miles per hour or fly 10 miles per hour? Fly. <laughs> Invisibility or flight? I guess I kind of yeah, answered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Flight. Flight. Iron Man or Wrinkled Man? Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> the Iron Man or Wrinkled Man? <laughs> Iron Man, yes. <laughs> I get that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, I guess it's a little bit over, so I'll figure out. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to go ahead and blast these. Who would you want on your team in a zombie apocalypse? Justin Bieber or Justin Timberlake? <laughs> <laughs> Timberlake. <laughs> Arriving slightly late or slightly early? Slightly late. Is your beer mug half full or half empty? Half full. Name, name one thing still on your bucket list. My <laughs> anything? Anything? Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, we'll scratch that one. That was. I, I, I don't want to say it. <laughs> we'll leave that out. All right, most handsome, you or Jim Bobby? Oh, Jim Bobby! There's no way. There's that, no way. That was a trap. <laughs> All right, let's say you and I just won ten thousand dollars, but we have to spend it right now. What are we buying? What are we buying? Right now. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you and I are flying somewhere. Where are we going? Philippines. All right. But we're driving somewhere. Where are we going? We're going to the uh, Baja. Baja. <laughs> the what? Baja, California. <laughs> Baja. All right. Uh, we're, you and I are walking. Where are we walking to? <laughs> we're walking to... Uh, we're going to the beach. Okay. The beach. <laughs> All right. Um, you and I are running down the street because... 
because there's people attacking us, some zombies. <laughs> some zombie apocalypse with Justin Bieber. <laughs> Keep it like, forget that, man. All right. All right. Well, that, that was just uh, for, for fun there. All right. Let's. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. So uh, to wrap it up, the final thing um, contact information. Uh, so. If you need to contact me, uh, you could contact me at uh, malanian at gmail.com or at uh, maktan usa at hotmail.com. And right. I do have a website, it's uh, maktan.com. Uh, and also, I have maktan online.com. So yes, there's a lot of dot coms. Yes. Hope you had your pen ready <laughs> and, and was ready to write that. All right, yeah. but uh, that wraps it up for our uh, um, bl uh, Blintzwalk uh, FQI instructor highlight. Uh, looking forward to you know sharing more of the highlights from other instructors down the road. But uh, for now, that's a wrap up for this episode. And good night, goodbye, and see y'all later. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Take care.